Hey everybody, nine pound hammer on the bench here, playing around, getting ready to do some mobiling. CC, so we're on the 10X Pro, so we're on DC, DC coupling, and we got our uh, center, uh, our graticle center, graticle at zero volts per division. Uh, and, uh, well, we're at zero volts on our line. That's not, not per division, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Uh, we're right on our center graduate on our indicator on our line at zero volts. That's zero volts meaning that we're on the center graduate. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So there's negative 80 millivolts. There's zero volts, 60 microvolts. Anyways, yada yada yada. We're going at zero, which is center graduate. That way, when I dead key, it's going to show you a two division carrier. So our, th our bandwidth is at, th we're at 30 kilohertz on our bandwidth. Our input attenuator is at 20 dB. We got our log reference at about 32, negative 30 dBm. We're in 10 dB log, so you see we're we're not on the linear, we're on a logarithmic scale, which is what I use. Our video filters at 10 kilohertz. We're scanning 0.5 megahertz per division. There's our carrier. Oh. Anyways, guys, 73 is kind of bored today. So we're at 10 kilohertz per division. Let's do something here. It's good. Let's see, yeah, that's kilohertz. There's 20 kilohertz per division, 10, 5, 2, let's go 10. Oh. And I got this freaking, what happened here guys, is I got this freaking uh, knob. There we go, and that's my indicator. So what I had going on here is I had this knob, I had it off, and I got the thing put on and Allen wrench down, so I've got this on the wrong setting. Is that what I'm saying is is that five, that point five right there that you see is on the megahertz scale? I've got this put on. I put this thing back on. That's actually the 10 kilohertz. So we're actually right here. Hope that makes sense to you guys. I've got to fix it, and I haven't done it yet. See there? And that's our center frequency indicator, and it goes right over here to about, we're on a 30, we're going to go to 30 megahertz and be our center frequency. And then that's where my carrier will be. Pretty cool, huh? And there's both of my side bands. And then my center carrier. That little mark is center frequency indicator. This little mark here. It gets covered up in the noise floor every once in a while. You gotta realize, guys, this thing is... I'm running no... Uh, the way I've got this set up, I've got to... I've got to do some more to it to make it right. So some of like this, some of this is getting hung up in the, in the noise floor, like... That's my center frequency indicator. 
And you see it, you see it there. And you can see the indicator there. I can. It's probably hard to see on the phone. Of course, I could change the log reference in the, and make it come bigger and bigger or the bandwidth. But I usually run it around. It's usually where I keep it. And we're looking at one on this this one here we're only looking at one channel so, so what, I'm, what I'm saying each one of these boxes is 10 kilohertz per division see here each one of these boxes so if we're on channel 20 this is 19, 18, 17, 16, so on and so forth. And that's why if we go over here to the transmitter and we go to channel, so there's 20. We go to channel 19, it's going to drop one division, one box. Hope that makes sense. You should go back to channel 20 on the transmitter, and they're gonna go to the center frequency. So then. So each one of these lines will tell you where your channels, your next channel's at, and that's how you read one of these. So we want to say we want to go up to channel 21. That's 27. Uh, that's 215. Be one box up the center gradical. 21. So say we want to go to channel 22. 10 kilohertz per division. One more division over channel 22. We go to channel. 22 be the next division 22 now we want to go to channel 23 we go to the 23 we go to the next division it'll be the next line 23 hope you all understand how that works go back to 20 on the transmitter. So you have a half channel. You got in the 195, which will be a half box. See there? That's 195, 19, 18. Good clean signal, too. Anyways. Oh, there's my indicator again. See ya. Eh. It comes and goes. And the reason why it's coming and going is it's getting hung up in the noise floor because of the way I've got everything tapped. Guys, I've got to get cables and an in uh, For this one here, I want to get like a 40 or 60 dB attenuator. And then I can also run my input in through this and then I could come out my trig out in the back and go into my other one but still I have to have an attenuator yeah everything could be an attenuated like everything could be attenuated here but you guys gotta understand when you run attenuation like this then you gotta do the math to make up the difference when you're doing all your measurements there's my center frequency marker again I get a little bit of uh, RFI issues and as you can see, it gets covered up sometimes in the... Of course, we can always bring our intensity up and bring the markers up. But I like to keep them right into the noise floor. Because as long as I know that I've got my center marker here at 30... Then I know that when I key, it's going to be in the center of the screen.
and because I have a little bit of uh, saturation loss in the cable that's why you see it not it's not 100% stable this here is perfect everything's working good I do want to get some uh, so I've got a bunch of these but I want to get a true BNC uh, inline attenuator I got a few more things I need to do to uh, to do it a hundred percent right Anyways, I wanted to show it. 73s. Show it again. I'll just reset it. Yeah. <sighs> 